So real quick, I just want to t touch on some build quality things that we did on our last drivetrain that really helped it last in competition while still being a very light drivetrain. First thing you'll notice is we have the three wide C channel here, and that allows us to mount our motors vertically. And it also allows us to um, have these custom drilled holes in there, which since they're the exact size of a screw, you don't need to put a bearing flat on those holes. So that's very beneficial for screw joints. You can see we've done it on actually all of the screw joints there. So that saved us all the weight of the bearing flats and the necessary screws to attach those. You can see on the outside, we use very similar concept um, with the drilling. And we just use some hex nut retainers right there, to center it on the hole. And then we have nylon screws for all the bearing flats that we do need for the drive, the drive shafts. You'll see we don't have any bearing flats on the side of the motors because the motors, if they're attached properly, should hold the shaft in a good enough position where it's not rubbing on a C-channel holes. And it's just much lighter or a little bit lighter to do it without that. Uh, next thing you'll notice is we use our motors very close to the ground. Um, and that's just because there's a 48 tooth gear and the 36, we have the 36 offset downwards. That way we just get even more space on top of the motors and it just helps keep the center of gravity low. You'll see all of the wheels and the gears are screw jointed and even without any cross bracing between the sides of the drive it's very rigid um it's it like i can't twist that at all here so it's just very strong and this is something i would highly recommend doing on your robot um and the reason it's actually so strong compared to some other screw joints is because our screw joints are sandwiching on each side so i'm trying to find a good spot um let's go with this one here so you can see we have a keps nut here and a caps knot on the other side. And those two caps nuts are tightened together on that C-channel, which hold, hold the screw very tightly in the C-channel. So it prevents it from wobbling at all. Um, and then you can see the same thing on the other side. We have a screw that pushes into the C-channel and we have a standoff that's tightened into the C-channel to really increase the strength. Another unique thing we've did on all of our robots this season actually, is a dropped center traction wheel. And we're able to achieve that with these custom gussets here. And that just drops the center wheel by a 16th of an inch, which means when it's on a hard sur surface, the drive wobbles a little bit forward and backward. But during a match, we don't have any wobble and that traction wheel just sinks to the tiles and really helps resist sideways pushing. Um, miscellaneous things. We have our gears screwed to the wheels and our gears are just completely flush mounted onto the wheels and they're beveled out so we don't need any kind of spacing. It's very easy to build. And then the screws are just offset into the gear so we had to cut away a little bit of plastic for that. Um, and then just caps nuts there. We made sure to tighten those quite a bit. but. Yeah, caps nuts, actually, we use them all over our robot and we haven't had any problems with them loosening, that kind of stuff. Um, as long as you tighten everything properly, it's very, very good. Um, last thing, second to last thing, is we had two crossbars made up of high strength shafts that went all the way across the robot. You can see they were mounted here and there, so that's why we have the gaps. And that helped keep the chassis very strong. It prevented the chassis from twisting in whenever there was too much weight on it. So that was very good. Um, and then the drilled high strength shafts are also just very, very convenient for mounting a lot of things, um, especially since you don't need any crossbars on the top half of the chassis that would potentially interfere with a potential intake mechanism, that kind of thing. Uh, last thing, I guess, is that we use a lot of shoulder screws, and you, we don't actually have that many here, but say this C-channel, for example, these are shoulder screws, 
and you can see that means the holes are very, very centered with the C-channel beneath it. So that helps keep everything in square. It's very nice. Um, and then also when we were building the chassis, something you can do is take, say, a five wide plate and put it across the chassis as you're putting in your screw joints. And that means you can get a very consistent distance across your chassis which helps keep everything very, very square and very aligned, um, which ultimately just makes the robot better. Two more things um, are on the chassis. We have, we had it boxed back here on both sides and that allowed us to get more strength out of that high strength axle cross brace. Um, and then these spacers were also doubling as goal guides to allow the mobile, mobile stake to smoothly slide into our back clamp. And then in the front here, you can see we just attached this chassis very simply with a spacer and with a standoff um, that protected the wheel. Um, even though it added an additional hole onto the drivetrain, it's only two screws and a two inch standoff. That's your weight. Um, if we were to have done polycarbonate gussets to go in a triangle at the front, even with nylon screws, that would still be a lot heavier. Um, and this works perfectly fine. So yeah, pretty much it. Thanks for watching.